Welcome to a post-deadline edition of Begley's Mailbag, where we're here to answer your questions about the Knicks and the NBA. And we're going to start off here with Chris Catania. And Chris wants to know, how confident are we entering the second half? And are there any updates on OG and Randall? Chris, my confidence doesn't really matter. I want to know how confident you are entering the second half. But if I'm a Knicks fan, I'm feeling pretty good about where this team is, considering the personnel considering the potential to get guys back late in this season i think they're pretty well positioned obviously you look ahead ideally you finish in the top three in the east so you could avoid boston in the second round we'll see how that all shakes out as far as og and ob julius randall and an ob i think you know nothing has changed there other than the fact that the knicks feel confident about getting him back uh, later on this regular season and getting him uh, in a good place for the postseason. And then Julius Randle, you know, I was told that there had been some positive developments during this two to three week rehab period that he's currently in. And that had left people, you know, with more optimism that he'd be able to be back this season as opposed to undergoing some kind of surgery that would keep him out for the year. We'll probably have a bigger update on that after the break but all positive signs there on randall so you should expect to get both of those guys back at some point during this regular season and have them ready for the postseason we've got one from playoff bound nyk do you see us snagging anyone from the buyout market and we talked about this a little bit i say no because the knicks have a set rotation right and if you're asking a veteran who got bought out with the idea of signing with another team and playing and presumably uh, presuming a playoff spot. And then you look at the Knicks and you say, well, yeah, they have a spot to offer in the rotation right now, but it's really a placeholder because, again, they expect OG and it'll be back. They expect Julius Randle back and maybe Mitchell Robinson comes back. So you look at that and you say, well, other teams could probably offer these guys, these veterans, uh, steady minutes, steady rotation spot. So I think that's where the Knicks would have a tough time on the buyout market. That's why I think it's probably more unlikely than not that they don't bring in, let's say, a Marcus Morris or a Robin Lopez or anybody of that ilk to this roster at the moment. We've got one here from Bub Jordan. And Jordan wants to know, wondering about the condition of Josh Hart's knee. I don't know how much the knee is impacting Josh Hart. He's not going to really uh, complain about it. But he did say back when he missed a game or two because of the knee that this was something he would have to monitor over the course of the season, deal with over the course of the season. And he did say, too, that, you know, sometimes the issue comes up, you know, later on in the year. He's used to it coming up later on in the year, but it came up earlier in the season this year because of him playing in the playoffs and then playing with Team USA in the FIBA World Cup. So yeah, it's something for him to monitor, for the Knicks medical staff to monitor as far as it affecting his shooting. I would imagine that it does to some degree, but also Hart felt pretty confident a few weeks back that he would be able to manage this thing and stay on the court. So, you know, maybe it's just a stretch here where he's not knocking shots down. I do think you make a good point about him being on the floor with other non-shooters. You look at the, the lineups that Tom Thibodeau has played amid all these injuries, and it's Achua, and it's Hart, and it's either Sims or Taj Gibson at center. Not a lot of shooting there, so maybe that also is impacting Hart. Uh, so those are factors I think that you hit on right there that are correct. But with the knee, you know, I, I think he'll be able to manage it. He feels good about being able to manage it, but I wonder if the Knicks try to clip his minutes a little bit if they have the chance to, to try to keep them fresh for the postseason. Got a question here from KNYT Hoops. KNYT wants to know if when everyone is healthy, will Tibbs consider a 10-man rotation or will he stick with nine and then who would be the odd man out? So I think that he would go nine or, you know, I don't think he's going eight because of the trades that they made and the idea that you're going to play Burks and Bogdanovich, but I, I, I don't see him going 10. That's just a guess based on kind of how things were discussed ahead of the deadline. Obviously, you know, new things come up and things change. Maybe he goes 10, but I think the, the, the more likely outcome prior to the deadline was going, staying nine or even shortening to eight, depending on how things went at the deadline. So, you know, 
the assumption would be that Miles McBride would be the odd man out there. Uh, when you talk about Precious Achua, you know, it's Mitchell Robinson, you know, he's going to have to get back and, and start to play, you know, eight to ten minutes a night before you talk about taking a Precious Achua out of the rotation. And then maybe, maybe even at that point, if Robinson is, is good to give you eight to ten minutes, maybe you still keep Achua in there, you know, for eight to ten minutes on his own. So Hartenstein, you know, isn't having to play big minutes night in and night out and then you get in as you get into the postseason so wouldn't necessarily scratch Chua out of this rotation conversation but if we're talking about sticking at nine we're talking about not going to ten I would assume McBride would be the odd man out got one from Fabo882 with Randall OG iHeart and Mitch coming back soon do you think Tibbs will play Brunson less minutes to rest those legs in preparation for the playoffs, uh, the one thing here is I, I get the sense that Jalen Brunson is kind of prepared for these minutes, prepared for this workload. Um, you know, whether that ultimately means that he's more susceptible to injury by playing big minutes, I, I can't tell you. He knows his body. But I, I do get the sense that, you know, his offseason is about preparing to play these big minutes over the course of the year into the postseason. Uh, that being said, I would I think that if there's an opportunity to, to rest Brunson or to play him fewer minutes, the Knicks would take advantage of that opportunity. But if you're chasing that top three spot in the East, will there be an opportunity there? Uh, it depends on how the teams around you are playing over the next few weeks. But if you're in a, in a race where you have to win every game, I can't see them taking uh, big minutes off of Brunson's plate. Maybe in blowouts, now that, you know, the All-Star game will be here and gone, maybe after blowouts, you know, he, he gets some more rest. But if you're trying to win every game to stay up in that top three to avoid Boston in the second round, I would think that you do not dial Brunson's minutes back. And, you know, you're talking about players who are not primary ball handlers. So it's not like player X is coming back and they can handle the ball in Brunson's place. So I, I would say unlikely is the answer to your question. That'll do it for this edition of Begley's Mailbag, but keep those questions coming because we will have another edition for you coming up soon.